Iran has reaffirmed its demands to return to compliance with the 2015 nuclear deal. This as negotiations are underway in Vienna to revive the landmark agreement. But will delegations present in the Austrian capital come to an understanding to salvage the accord? Iran and the remaining signatories of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action are holding a new round of talks in Vienna in an effort to save the nuclear agreement nearly three years after Washington's unilateral withdrawal in 2018. As talks continue over a spat of issues, the Islamic Republic has reiterated its demands for returning back to compliance with the JCPOA. That's according to two sources who informed Press TV of the conditions. Iran's demands regarding JCPOA talks. The United States must remove sanctions that prevent Iran from benefiting from the JCPOA. Legal institutions will accept the outcome of the Vienna talks only once all U.S. sanctions are removed and the removal is verified by Tehran. The United States has to guarantee that it won't use the snapback mechanism after rejoining the deal. The United States has to pay for the losses it inflicted on Iran by withdrawing from the JCPOA. According to the sources, the United States has to guarantee that foreign companies cooperate with the Islamic Republic following Washington's rejoining of the agreement. Press TV analysts say Katsa and Iran Sanctions Act, visa bans, the dollar U-turn, and Section 311 of the Patriot Act are fundamental obstacles to Iran's gains under the JCPOA. Press TV analysts say among such obstacles are also a number of U.S. President's executive orders that prohibit transactions with respect to Iran and block property of Iranian individuals, governments, and financial institutions. They also say failing to remove sanctions, a 120-day or 180-day sanction waivers also deprive Iran of benefits stipulated under the JCPOA. The JCPOA revival talks come as Iranian officials have time and again warned that Tehran will not allow the negotiations to become attritional. Iran's top negotiator in Vienna and Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Arochi says the Islamic Republic would stop the negotiations if it detects that the other side lacks seriousness, tries to buy time, or seek to add new topics to those under discussion. Iran insists that the 2015 nuclear agreement can only be salvaged if its demands are met and that its conditions are the country's definitive policy. Former U.S. President Donald Trump abandoned the Iran nuclear deal in May 2018. Tehran, however, waited for a year, gave leeway to the European signatories to make up for the U.S. pullout. But the so-called E3 failed to abide by their commitments. Now, with the new U.S. administration in office for nearly 100 days, Washington has so far failed to take any solid measure to return to the deal. All in all, Iran says the ball is in the U.S.'s court to return to the agreement and remove all the sanctions on Tehran or pursue the failed policy of predecessor known as maximum pressure campaign and push ahead with its hostile policy against the Islamic Republic. Tim Anderson is the director at the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies and joins us now out of Sydney. Tim, welcome. What's your take on this? Essentially, Iran says that it, its country, Tehran, has sacrificed so much since the JCPOA went into effect, or rather, if it actually went into effect, but yet um, benefited very little. Yes, there was a, a year or so of benefit there, but then it all evaporated. And I'm not really sure why um, Iranian officials are engaging in these talks at this stage. They have a very clear position. Um, they held up their side of the agreement. The US abandoned it completely. The European partners didn't deliver. Uh, the Russian and the Chinese did deliver. So I'm not really sure why they are discussing things, really, because to my mind, it's virtually a, a dead entity, the JCPOA. It's just lying in the morgue waiting to be buried, but no one is really ready to bury it yet. So, Tim, you think that Iran is actually wasting its time in Vienna with, during, and with these negotiations with the United States and the other part, the parties to the, uh, to the uh, nuclear deal? Maybe there's some process, diplomatic process, which uh, the government of Iran wants to go through. But look, let's uh, take the time to go back to the premise of this. The whole premise of the JCPOA was somehow Iran has to convince 
its enemies, effectively hostile outside parties, that it is not a threat to the region. Now, how it would do that and why it would do that and whether there's any end to that sort of reassurance is um, something worth considering, really, because uh, I'm not sure why Iran has to prove that. At one point in the past, there was a lot of pressure on Iran because there was the whole UN Security Council against them. That's not the case now, so I'm not sure exactly why the premise of the JCPOA still applies today. What's the term, in your opinion, the you know the consequences if Iran should walk away from the current talks in Vienna, and because if these talks drag on without any tangible results, I think there's uh, there's some pressure from the Russia and the Chinese side, which have now clearly become uh, partners with Iran and they would like to see the process continue. But in a sense, uh, Iran doesn't really have to do anything. It has, uh, the US has no um, political capital anymore since it tore up the agreement and walked away. Uh, and the position of returning to the original 2015 agreement is something that it seems the US is incapable of doing. So I'm not sure really what there is to talk about at this stage. And again, uh, just expanding on that a little further, who would bear the consequences of that? Uh, because Iran, as you mentioned, did actually stay within the agreement despite after Donald Trump uh, unilaterally withdrew from it and abided by it for an entire year, despite the United States walking away and the other European uh, uh, parties not adhering to their commitments. Iran stayed within that deal, and now should these deal, these negotiations drag on uh, without any results, uh, who is it going to affect the most? Well, the U.S. in many respects has um, uh, played all its cards. You know, it's uh, mounted a and still mounts a genocidal type of siege on Iran, as it is doing on Syria and Yemen and many other countries. And uh, it now expects something from Iran. I think it's really not just insulting, it's really, in a sense, a sign of weakness to be, in, to be seen to be engaging in some sort of negotiation. But there are partners of Iran, like I said, Russia and China, and it may be that there is some expectation that some of the Europeans may break ranks and say, well, yes, we agree with Iran. But some of them, like France, for example, have jumped on this bandwagon of um, the US to try and add things into the agreement and so on. And it seems to me there's no end to it, really. It's a bit like uh, a dog is barking at you. And what do you do? You run away and the dog keeps chasing you. The dog will keep chasing you in those sort of circumstances. So. Um, having said that, I repeat uh, that there may be some diplomatic process here where the government of Iran wants to be seen to be uh, putting all its bona fides on the table and let the other side allow the process to fail. But I suspect that's what's going to happen. Really, right. I can't see. Uh, just finally, Tim, because I know at the time of the, when the deal was signed, there were many in Iran that were against the, the deal. They're saying that Iran had given too much. Um, or, uh, in uh, with uh, you know in exchange for what the United States was offering on the table, and the other parties what they were offering on the table, so essentially Iran can, as it has alluded to, uh, officials have you know noted that it it will walk away from the deal, and it has as you noted Russia and China, it can look elsewhere for trade and uh, you know and the such. Well, it doesn't even have to walk away from the deal because it can say we complied as long as we could. Then we gradually withdrew according to the terms of the deal itself. And I think that's what's happening. I think that uh, Iran wants to allow the uh, the recalcitrant uh, partners, you know, the US and the Europeans to fail and to let it fail and to the responsibility of failing be seen on the shoulders squarely of the US and those European partners. But let's remember also the premise why it's not really about nuclear matters. This is about trying to um, reduce or eliminate the influence of Iran in the entire region. And how is it possible to do that? And why is it that Iran should be proving to outside um, 
enemies who've shown themselves enemies of the Iranian people, that they are not a threat or their influence is not a threat in the region. Um, it, it's an extraordinary premise, and I think it deserves some re-examination at this stage. Yeah, I think that final uh, point that you mentioned there, Tim, needs another probably <laughs> another week or so to discuss and address. It's a very important point, but I, I thank you. Uh, I'm afraid we have run out of time. Tim Anderson there, the director at the Centre for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, joining us out of uh, Sydney.